Hey everyone, it's Kristen from Quebeca, and today I'm going to be showing you my step-by-step -step process for making acrylic pour paintings. If you're not already familiar with acrylic pouring, then this will be a good starter video for you. I've been doing acrylic pour painting for about a year now, and it's a really fun and relaxing way to create. My process is still pretty simple, and the supplies that I'm using are not archival. If you want to make acrylic pour paintings that you can sell, it's best to use artist grade acrylics and a pro pouring medium like the one from the Liquitex brand because those are formulated for use in this way. But for now, I'm just having fun and experimenting using inexpensive supplies that you can find at the craft store or a big box store or even at the dollar store. Okay, let's get started. Here are the basic supplies that you'll need. First, you want to protect your work surface since acrylic pouring can get messy. You can use a large plastic garbage bag, a drop cloth, or even old newspapers or some plastic grocery bags to cover your work surface. I'm using this plastic sheeting that comes in a 50 foot roll. I just cut it with scissors to the size that I'll need, and I can reuse one piece over and over, so this roll will last me for a long time. Be sure to cover a larger area than you think you might need to cover just in case you splash paint or need a larger space than you think you will for paint containers and other supplies. Next, I have a foil cookie tray that will sit directly under my painting and catch most of the paint. This is optional, but I like having this because I don't have a dedicated space for doing this type of painting, and having the tray makes cleanup much more quick and easy when I need to put everything away. I bought these trays as a set of two for a dollar at the Dollar Tree, but you can also use a regular sheet of aluminum foil or a cardboard box, something like that. Next, I like to use gloves so my hands won't get covered in paint as I'm working because I really don't like having to try to clean paint from under my fingernails for days after when I forget to wear gloves. I use them when I work with alcohol inks too, so I always have some in my workspace. These are vinyl gloves that I buy by the box at the store, and at my store they're in the cleaning supplies aisle. For my paints, I'm going to be using craft paints. These are all folk art and Americana brands, but I've used the Martha Stewart craft paints as well as the Apple Barrel brand that you can find at Walmart and the Craft Smart paints from Michaels and have had good results with all of them. It's about one to two dollars per bottle of the smaller bottles of paint and you can often find sales at places like Michaels and get even better deals, sometimes as low as 50 cents a bottle. I also have a larger bottle of white paint since I tend to use a lot of white in my paintings. There are several brands of liquid acrylics that come ready to pour, but the craft paints that I'm using need to be thinned down so they'll be easy to pour and will work well in our painting. Here's where the pouring medium comes in. I mentioned earlier that you can purchase professional pouring mediums like the one from the Liquitex brand, but we're going to be making our own pouring medium using regular Elmer's glue all and water. Some people use distilled water for this, and I really do need to pick some of that up, but I've just been using regular tap water and haven't had any issues that I'm aware of. But if you plan on having your painting around for a while, you'll probably want to go with the distilled water just to be safe so you won't have to worry about any yucky stuff growing on your painting over time. I'm going to put my glue and water into one of these squeezy bottles. You can often find these in the cake decorating aisle at the craft store. I bought mine from Amazon, and I actually have a really big one too since I've been doing a lot of acrylic pouring. This smaller bottle has the measurements marked down the side, which makes it really easy to measure out the glue in the water. I use a 50-50 mix, so one part Elmer's glue all to one part water. I'll first fill the bottle to the four ounce mark with the glue, and I got a little messy there, so I'll wipe that off and go fill the bottle up to the eight ounce mark with water. I did the water part off camera, so now I'm back with the filled container, and I'm gonna put the top back on and shake it up really well. We want to make sure that the glue and water have been thoroughly mixed before moving on to the next step. Giving it a good shake for a minute or two usually does the trick. Now that our pouring medium, aka the glue and water, is well mixed, the next step is to add it to our paints. I use these little food service containers for my paints, and you can use anything from plastic drinking cups to yogurt containers, or even plastic cat food containers for this. I have a separate container for each of the paint colors that I'll be using. To mix the paints in the pouring medium, I use wooden craft sticks. You could also save the sticks from popsicles and use those, or you can use wood skewers, plastic spoons, anything like that. A set of, I think it was a hundred of these craft sticks was only a dollar at the dollar store, and after the paint on them is left to dry completely, you can actually reuse them for your next pour. 
I'm going to add about a tablespoon of paint to each of the plastic cups. I don't need too much paint since I'll only be using an 8x10 canvas for the painting. After I'm finished adding the paint, I'll add about the same amount of pouring medium to the cup. The amount of pouring medium that you'll need can vary depending on the brand of paint that you're using, and sometimes it can even vary from color to color within the same brand. The final mix should be about the consistency of buttermilk, so add as much pouring medium as you need to get that consistency. I've found that it's usually not much more than a one-to-one -one ratio of paint to pouring medium. Next, I'll thoroughly mix the paint and the pouring medium using the craft stick. We want to make sure that everything is really well mixed before we move on to the next step. Okay, now that I've got all of the paints mixed with the pouring medium, it's just about time to pour. I've been using these 8x10 canvas panels for my paintings, and I really like working with them. You can't hang them on the wall though, so if you want to do that, you'll want to buy a regular canvas. The price per panel usually works out to be about a dollar per panel. Today, I'm using the Art Alternatives brand, but I've also bought the brand that Michael sells, and when they're having a good sale, the panels are about the same price per panel. Before we pour, we'll need to raise our canvas panel off of the surface that we're working on so the paint will be able to run off of the sides. I've seen people press thumbtacks into all the corners on the underside to do this, but I don't have the right kind of thumbtacks to do this right now, so I've been using these little plastic shot glasses. I bought this pack of 24 for a dollar at the dollar store, and you can reuse them over and over once any paint that gets onto them dries completely. You can also use empty yogurt containers for this, and I could have even used the food service containers that I use for the paint. A box that's smaller than the surface that you're painting on will work too. I use four of the shot glasses, one for each corner of the painting, and then I'll set the canvas panel on top. All right, now it's time for the fun part, which is the actual acrylic pour. There are really as many different techniques for pouring as there are videos about acrylic pouring on YouTube, and each of these techniques will give you different results. So there really are endless possibilities to what you can do with this. I'll just be pouring each of my paint colors onto the canvas one at a time. I don't really have much of a plan at this point, but I do want to spread the colors around the canvas so there isn't much of one in any given area. I'm also keeping some of each color of paint in the cups at this point since I may need to add more here and there later on. Next, I'll pick up the panel and tip the boards so the paint will start moving around. You never have complete control over what happens with acrylic pores, but you can guide the paint around the canvas by tipping your canvas to get the paint flowing in the direction that you want it to go. Part of the fun about acrylic pouring is that you never know quite what's going to happen. After I've gotten the paint moving around, I'm going to come back in and add more color in areas where I want it. I'll add some more yellow along the right side of the panel, tip it around a little bit more, and I'm noticing that I have a whole lot of white going on in the center of the panel, so I'll add some more of the bright pink and light pink there. I'll continue tipping the board around to get the paint flowing where I want it, and I'll come back in here and there to add additional paint. Most of the time, paint will flow to the edges of the panel and will start running off of the edges of the panel pretty quickly after you start tilting it, but there are often times when there's just that one small area or areas where paint doesn't seem to want to flow. In case this happens, you can come in with one of the wood craft sticks and manually move the paint to the area, or you can make a quick swipe with an old gift card like I'm doing here to move the paint into the area. You don't want to do this too much though because the paints will start to mix together into one color. So if after a quick swipe or two you still have a blank spot with no paint, I'd suggest adding more paint to the area. After I'm done with my painting, I'll wipe off my gloves so I'm not getting acrylic paint on everything that I touch. And one final thing that I want to do is to come in with a little spritzer bottle that's filled with rubbing alcohol and spritz it on any areas where I see bubbles. The alcohol pops the bubbles and also adds a little bit of extra interest and visual texture where it interacts with the paint. If you don't want that, you can always spray the alcohol directly into the paint cup before pouring it to pop the bubbles in the paint. The final painting will need to dry for roughly 24 to 36 hours, or longer if your pour was especially thick or your canvas is larger. As the paint dries, more interesting effects will often show up, so it's always a fun surprise when I come in to see what it looks like after it's completely dry. I hope that you found this video to be helpful, and if you'd like to see more acrylic pour painting videos, let me know what you think in the comments, and please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and consider subscribing to my channel for more craft tutorial and project videos. 
You can find a full list of supplies used in this project in the description area below or in the area below the video if you're watching on kbeka.com. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll tune in again soon.